So I'm Janet Matangihan. I, I work with Kevin uh, on barley and quinoa. And it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Juan Antonio Gonzalez. He's the director of the Instituto de Ecología Miguel Lilio Fundacion in Tucuman, Argentina. And um, he published his first paper in quinoa in 1989. And since then, he's been working on quinoa in the lab, greenhouse in the field, and their team's goal is to reintroduce quinoa in the valleys of the Argentinian Northwest. And this afternoon, he'll be sharing with us their studies, eco-physiological eco studies on the quinoa varieties in the Argentinian Northwest. So let's welcome Dr. Gonzalez. Okay. Uh, I hope you understand my English. <laughs> Uh, first of all, um, I want to give thanks to Kevin for the invitation, um, to the sponsor, to all the people, to the organizers. Uh, it's a very pleasure to stay here, to sharing my my, my passion for quinoa. Uh, okay, the title is Ecophysiological Study in Quinoa Variety in Argentinian Northwest. Um, as you know, uh, quino, the quinoa origin is, in, is a South American crop. The origin center is the, the, near the Titicaca Lake or the area near the Titicaca. Um, uh, Inca Empire used quinoa as uh, uh, for uh, alimentation, for nutrition. And the most important is the quinoa can grow from uh, near the sea level to uh, 4,000 meters above sea level. And the latitude is very important because the combination between altitude and latitude gives some altitudinal levels for growth different kinds of quinoa. <coughs> no, I didn't uh, in this altitudinal and uh, transit, quinoa can grow and uh, as uh, Willy Rojas said, there is a lot of uh, commercial, no, not only commercial variety, but a session. Um, uh, why quinoa in Argentina and Northwest? According to the history in Argentina and Northwest, our grandfathers and grand grandfathers grow quinoa, but actually quinoa don't exist in, in, in Northwest Argentina or very few crops in the Argentinian Northwest. Uh, we think that Argent uh, quinoa will be a very interesting crop according to the climatic change or uh, some problem with climate, uh, climatic uh, problem. Uh, in the Argentinian Northwest, we have a different altitudinal region between Chaco vegetation, selva, mountain forest, cloud forest, pre-puna and puna, and high Andean vegetation. In this transect, uh, we can grow quinoa as an alternative crops. Uh, we have a lot of microclimate climate in medium and high mountain between 2,000 and 4,000 meters above sea level. Uh, this land now are considered marginal land for the soil types and climatic conditions. So we have not a lot of uh, crops in this region. For example, the Puna region is a high plateau in the Argentina Northwest between three and 4,000 meters above sea level with the strong vegetation similar to Bolivia and Peru and some part of Ecuador. Uh, we have this surface it's difficult to pronounce the number. Uh, we have this uh, surface only in the Puna region that can be used for quinoa crops. The other region, uh, probably potential for quinoa crops, is the pre Puna region between 2,000 and 3,000 meters above sea levels. The surface is this. In, in this case, the, we have a shrub vegetation and columnar cacti, like, like this. Uh, in this region, in the Argentina Northwest, we have the Valle Calchaquí, the Calchaquí Valley, 
uh, is a region between uh, this altitude, this altitude and this surface that will be potential, it may be potential for chemo crops. Kachaki Valley, in this moment, there is some species, some crops like lettuce, tomato, chili, grapes, peach, but very, very few indigenous, indigenous crops like maize and then potato or quinoa. Uh, the interaction between crops, water, and environment, uh, all the mentioned species are uh, demanding of a lot of water. A lot of water, and there is another problem with uh, pesticides. The distribution of precipitation in this altitudinal uh, transit is different. For example, this is for the lowland in the Argentinian Northwest, and this is for the highland. The, the input of water is very, very different. So to grow lettuce here is very easy, but to grow a lettuce or tomato in this area is very, very difficult in terms of environmental. Uh, in this zone, exists a lot of uh, camelids that they need uh, 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 this grass uh, as food. But in this moment, the, the, the grass is not very abundant. In this context, it is necessary to look for new alternative crops. In the other point to, to take into account is climatic change, especially drug. Oh, Sorry. Especially drag and marginal soils. Uh, so our goal is uh, we are trying to recover and develop the classical Andean crop, but especially quinoa due to the rusticity. Our proposal is this, uh, sorry, to get a multi-purpose species not only one species for food or for nutrition, for the other use. Uh, we think that quinoa is very, very special for a, a, a multipurpose. Uh, uh. What we what, what planned about our study in quinoa is we planned grow analysis, <laughs> sorry, grow analysis, Photosynthetic, photosynthetic assimilation and pathway because there is some discussion in relation if quinoa is a C3 or a C4 species. Uh, the grain yield, the nutritional value, especially the protein and total and essential amino acid because essential amino acid is very important in the population for the for child in the soil. Uh, mineral contents for a similar reason because uh, some people don't uh, consume milk, for example, so quinoa may be a good uh, suppliers of calcium, for example. Uh, quinoa, like vegetable or fodders, uh, the content, the saponin content, and another important uh, features of quinoa is the foliar pigment, especially the red pigment. And uh, we have uh, a lot of lab experiment in relation to germination, uh, the germination in relation to water, salt, heavy metal. And another thing very important is uh, quinoa is very resistant to UVB radiation. We think that quinoa may be a donor, a, donante, a, a donor of gene against the UVB radiation, the ultraviolet radiation. Okay, the final experiment was performed in this place in Calilla, Amaicha del Valle, the near 2,000 uh, meters above sea levels. Uh, these are the soil, the type of soil, especially is the sandy and alkaline soil. You can see that the pH is uh, near A. I uh, can see where it is. Uh, well, Okay, I forget. No, uh, here is. Uh, I. Uh, we use different uh, type of seed, especially from Bolivia and Peru. 
we use uh, Amilda, Chukapaka, Sika, Kamiri, Kankoya, Ratuki, Robura, Sahama, Samaranti, and Sajanya. Uh, this is a, a, a quickly characterization of seed weight, grain color, and grain size. Some results. Uh, we have different uh, grain yield between near 300 to 3,000, near 4,000 kilogram per hectare per hectare. Uh, in uh, the, the yield uh, have a great variation uh, according to the variety we consider. Uh, there is an important thing that uh, we will see in the next uh, slide better is the relationship between biomass allocation and yield. For example, in the case of Zika, the roots is near 9%, but the production of seed is near uh, below 20%. Zika is a very big, very tall species, near two meters from soils. But in the case of Chukapaca and Sajanya, have a better yield and the distribution is different. For example, roots is near 7%, but the seed yield is 33%. Chukapaca and Sajanya is not a tall uh, species uh, variety. Sika uh, is more, more longer, more tall. The aerial dry way is very important according to our point of view because biomass production, for example, at uh, 100 days, we can use as fodder. For example, this is the production of uh, biomass production before flowering. Before flowering, and we have near six or seven tons per hectare in dry way, dry way biomass. This is the, uh, sorry. This is the analysis of lead protein, fibers, and mineral content in, the, in, in that state at uh, 100 days. And we have a good uh, percentage, for example, of proteins. We have a, a good uh, protein in stem. This is leaf, this is a stem. And this is fiber, and this is ash. And this is the content of nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and carbon. This analysis said that the, the aerial part of the plant will be or can be used as, as a fodder, for, for example, for camel. Uh, the relationship between biomass production, seed production, will be very, is a very important aspect related to the use of quinoa. For example, if I need some quinoa for seed production or if I need some quinoa or for fodder production. Why I insist in further production? Because uh, we need pastos para alimentar. Pasture? Pasture, yes. We need pasture in this area. For example, in Calcetti Valley, there is a few green material for fodders. So, quinoa may be a good supplementary fodder for animals like goat, rabbit, cow, and others. There, there may be a complement between the production of quinoa and the uh, nutrition of this animal. Uh, so it is possible to design the crops not only with one species, probably with two or three species, like for, for nutrition, for fodders, or for pigment production, for example. It, it, we are thinking in a combination of different variety of quinoa. In proteins, the total protein content, the average in the in in, in Kaljaki Valley is near uh, uh, twelve percent. Is this value? This value is higher than wheat, maize, and barley. But the the most important is uh, the soluble proteins that is uh, near 20%. Soluble proteins we can uh, use immediately in our, in our body, in our physiology. This is another important and uh, 
no, the last, the amino acid. The amino acid present, we have all the, the amino acid and essential amino acid in quinoa. We analyze, oh, sorry. we analyze the amino acid present in Tucumán, in the Argentina Northwest, for all the varieties, Amilda, Chucapaca, Zika, and we have a very interesting uh, quantity amino acid. For example, uh, th this is the essential amino acid that very important in the nutrition of child in, in, this, in that area. For example, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, trionine, uh, it's very important because the people in this moment are eating another cereals that not contain this kind of amino acid, but quinoa has it. For example, lysine is a high proportion of lysine in our analysis. Methionine is scarce in most cereal proteins, so maybe very important quinoa in this in this sense. And tryptophan is very uh, is uh, it's not high, but it's very close to the, the value register for another cereals. Protein content in quinoa is uh, in relation to eggs, for example, that is more, uh, it's a complete uh, uh, aliment, have a very close uh, amino acid content in chicken eggs. So quinoa has the necessary content of lysoleucina for school boys requirement. This results are very important for us because the population, a, a, a very high percentage of the population is near the, the, the poverty line. Another thing is the interaction, the genotype by environment relationship. In our experience with a seed from Bolivia and Peru, we found this, for example, the same variety, for example, Amilda, in Patacamaya have this percentage of protein, but in Encalilla, in Argentina, Northwest have a different percentage. In general, you can see that at low altitude, we get a better protein percentage. It is important because some people believe that if I uh, have a seed with 10% of protein, the 10% will be permanent in another environment. But the interaction with environment is very important to consider in our planning crops. This is another uh, conclusion. In general, total amino acid content are higher at high altitude, that with an exception of Ratuki and Rubur, is higher. But the most important is this. The lysina and trionina are very important because they have a very low content in other grain that in this moment are used in the people in Argentina and Norway. So quinoa is important. The quality index of protein, the quality index, uh, the definition is the tryptophan quantity in relation to the total protein. The quality index for Patacamaya is near four and 10, and in Encalilla in Argentina, Norway is near four to nine. This value is very uh, is low, but very close in relation to this. But the most important is that the QE, the quality index, is significantly higher than reported for common cereals. The mineral content. We analyze the mineral content, uh, 55 chemical content, five chemical elements were analyzed, among other uh, aluminum, ferrum, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus. And we found a good correlation between mineral and protein content. When protein content is higher, the higher is the mineral content. The uh, element uh, uh, that uh, are present in more percentage is uh, potassium. Potassium, for example, magnesium, 
uh, iron is very uh, uh, phosphorus is very important in all the variety utilize. Uh, this is important uh, because the iron and calcium, for example, are uh, very higher in relation to mice and barley, uh, and the same is with the caloric value. This is the, the um, caloric value uh, is an average of total uh, variety usage. Uh, we analyze too the distribution of mineral uh, with X-ray in the different part of the plant. This is the embryo of the plant, and we analyze the distribution of this mineral uh, in this part of the plant. Why we want to know this? Because we are thinking that is important or maybe very important for a tissue culture. Tissue culture to get uh, a special food for the son, for a child, only considering the embryos, for example, not the plant, only this part of the future plant. Uh, this is a, a data from the last uh, censo, census, the last census in Argentina. For example, uh, in medium and high mountain, near 20% of the population is below the poverty line. Uh, I think that the poverty is not only in relation with a material thing uh, or educational, but is uh, have a relation too with nutritional status. And in this moment, the population of the Argentina Norway, uh, the the diet, dieta, the diet is only with common cereal like barley or wheat or, or arroz or rice. According to our result. Protein, amino acid, and mineral content may be a good complementary food in Argentinian mountain, mountain area. And probably this uh, result may be extrapolated for Bolivia and Peru or another uh, environment similar to the Argentinian Northwest. But uh, quinoa has anti nutritional uh, compound, for example, saponins and tannins. Tannins were reported by our first time in quinoa by our group in 1989. But uh, we can see that this anti-nutritional compost may be transformed in some positive according to the pharmacological point of view. For example, saponin, uh, uh, it is very important because it has an effect uh, of the disruption of the red blood cells uh, in, the, in this group of blood, A and zero. And Taninum was found in other species like sorghum, uh, but have very important application in industry. This, uh, we found that saponin body, uh, or, uh, we put saponin body because I don't know how to, to mention it. Uh, this is a publication that I, I have a copy. Uh, saponin body is located in the pericarp of the cell of the of the of the seed. Uh, so it is possible to uh, design, design to design a method, a physical method to remove saponin, not using water, because the water was contaminated by saponin, but by a physical method. For example, we can remove saponin because the uh, saponin is in uh, uh, in corpus in, in body is accumulated like uh, like a, like a body like a small body uh, in in Cochabamba Bolivia for example there is a design that use this this uh, property where the the seed make a collision between uh, entre ellas, be, be, between each other, and this collision produce a remove of saponin because saponin is body. 
in this case, uh, the, this method don't use water, don't use, uh, don't use electricity in the same quantity that used in this method. Uh, saponin and tannin may be an opportunity. For example, saponin may be a good industrial development with medical and pharmaceutical applications. Uh, the other the aspect is uh, the colors of the dye. For example, uh, quinoa have a, a good quantity of chlorophyll, flavonoids, the, that, as you know, uh, flavonoids are, are an antioxidant, and red pigment, a uh, good name is betalines. We detected betalines in all the, the variety used, and we detected the enzyme, enzyme the enzyme that called uh, synthesizer that synthesizes uh, betalines. The pathway of betalines is a L DOPA, L D O P A enzyme. For example, this is the NL6 variety. But there is another, a lot of um, variety with this color, with a lot of betalain. And uh, we have some result in relation to the use or the future, future use of betalain like uh, anti-cancer. For example, in Wisconsin, in the United States, some people study the effect of betalain on cancer and probably in the Washington State University, we can study this, this subject in, in the near future. Uh, I think that is the, a very, very important application in, med in medicine, uh, uh, and especially in cancer problem. Uh, the betalain are used uh, as organic dye in yogurt, cheese, in, including, including wine or produce a color in red wine. Uh, the first, uh, this is the dimension. Uh, sorry. Uh, we detect the enzyme involved involve in the synthesis, in this synthesis. This enzyme, uh, uh, it was known only in fungi, but now it's, uh, uh, we know that is present in chemo. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have a lot of um, relationship with physicals and chemical uh, people that work in the effect of ultraviolet radiation. And quinoa is very important because uh, it produces uh, a chemical shield, chemical shield, shield, a chemical shield to protect the tissue against the ultraviolet radiation. This is uh, uh, one of the, our paper published in Photochemistry and Photobiology. And we can see that when quinoa received uh, UBB, immediately the biochemistry machinery uh, build a chemical compound relay, relay, uh, related to flavonoids, like flavonoids, flavonoids to protect to protect this uh, tissue, and especially to protect the photosynthetic machinery. Hmm? Uh, these flavonoids are antioxidant, and so have a lot of application in medicine and pharmacological studies. Uh, this is the, the principal result. We have another, for example, this is the photosynthetic pathway. There is a, a, after this study, we have no doubt that a Kenopodium quinoa is a C3 species with a high rate assimilation. It's very, very, very high assimilation. Uh, another evidence is from the study of the tissue. The disposition of the tissue in C3 plant is very, very special. It's very different when uh, we study, for example, the tissue of C4 species. Quinoa is a C3 with a high assimilation. Another data uh, that was made in the United States is the, uh, the uh, carbon isotope discrimination. Carbon isotope discrimination is very different between C3 and C4. And according to this uh, analysis, 
quinoa y se eh, C3 species. The assimilation rate is very different according to the variety. And the, this is an oscillation of the assimilation of CO2 during the day, during one day at different hours. Uh, the maximum assimilation for the sum is uh, have a variation between 15 and uh, near uh, 35 uh, micromole. It's very high for a C3 species. So quinoa may be a good, um, a good species to remove the CO2 from the atmosphere. Another aspect considered in, in, in this study was the community participation. Community participation for, for us is very important because we go to the file with the, all the equipment, the file equipment, and the people don't know whether, when, what are you doing, that people, uh, what, what they, uh, I want to know what is, uh, what is this apparatus. What, uh, so we uh, involucramos, involucramos, participate. Yeah, involve the, the population and especially the boys in the technical school and the primary school. For example, this is a participation of the, uh, of the uh, people, especially the primary school, in the sewing step. In the sewing step, and we give an, an, a class of, an, of quinoa, of the, 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 the the problem of environmental, the, 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 the of beneficial, the benefit, the benefit of use quinoa instead of the cereal uh, that use normally. And for example, this is the, in, uh, in the last uh, two weeks, the uh, seed recollection. Seed recollection. And the other step is uh, to give a, uh, seed for a school for the family to use and uh, to use the quinoa as a food uh, in the near future in the near future we hope to understand the drug for example we have a, i don't know if if uh, the other countries have the same problem we have a very low very very low germination in file it is necessary to put 100 seed to get only 10% of germination. Probably it's an interaction between the fluctuating temperature between day and night and the salt and another uh, uh, factor, factors in soil or in air. But it is necessary to understand, it is necessary to understand this problem because uh, uh, Auroriums, I mean, yes. Well, because we can save seeds in this community or uh, some uh, or some farmers. Uh, we are very, very interested in this point: biochemical study and pharmacological study in relation to red pigments. I think that may be a, a new aspect in quinoa especially in relation to cancer. And uh, we need uh, the, to achieve uh, a variety with a short life cycle, because the people said, I don't want any species during six months in my, in, in my farm. I need to put another uh, vegetable so uh, this is point is very important to get a variety between 100 or more uh, dyes. For example, NL6 that was selected in Holland may be a good uh, variety to use in this part of Argentina. I think that is all. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.